Jananjana Shalakaya Chaksur Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamane Namaste Sarasati Devi Kauravani Precharine Nirvisesha Sunyavadi Paschachade Satarine Vanchakalpa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavan Hebyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Hatvaita Gadadhar Shri Vasari Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare We welcome everyone to our ongoing study of the nectar of instruction for the Bhakti Shastri. So, we will just take a look over the objectives which were mentioned for the previous text. If you look in your objectives on page 125, text numbers 5 and 6 mention the different points which we're meant to cover. Let's just quickly review them, make sure we covered them. Explain the three categories of devotees with reference to relevant Sanskrit words. All right, categories of devotees, Kanista, Madhyamotama, we went through them, that quite well. Explain the process of Diksha with reference to relevant Sanskrit words, process of Diksha. So we spoke about taking initiation, the purpose of initiation and uh, how Diksha is an ongoing process. And then describe ways they can personally associate appropriately with the three categories of devotees. Ways we personally associate with the devotee. Right? We mentioned that about offering respects to a devotee within the mind, a new devotee, respect in the mind, offering obeisances to someone worshipping the deity and associating and serving the topmost devotee. Then discuss application of Srila Prabhupada's statement, a disciple should be careful to accept an Uttama Adhikari as a spiritual master. So we had some, we spent some time discussing that. There were a number of questions. And generally in ISKCON, we see that the process is generally, we're getting initiation into ISKCON rather than just being the property of a guru. We're a member of ISKCON. The initiation connects us into ISKCON and makes us a member of, in the Sampradaya. So we don't leave ISKCON under any circumstances. We want to stay within ISKCON. But that was, uh, and, and the way in which we can stay within ISKCON is by being particularly secure under the shelter of Srila Prabhupada. Then explain the term empowered Vaishnava. We said a, a Vaishnava is empowered when he can bring many others to Krishna consciousness. Is that echo coming from me? Uh, 
I can't hear an echo on my end. Um, uh, I can hear um, our echo. Mm -hmm. It's maybe some uh, mics are on unmute. Unmute. That's why. No. Okay. Yeah, I hear an echo. If everybody mutes, I think that will clear it up. All right, so empowered Vaishnava means he can bring others to Krishna consciousness. He has that ability. Uh, describe the appropriate attitude towards dealing with an empowered Vaishnava. The appropriate attitude, we want to hear from him. We'd like to also offer service if we get the opportunity. Examples within ISKCON of inappropriate attitudes towards seeing the external features of devotees. Inappropriate attitudes would be discrimination against someone on the basis of their colour or their race or their caste or their previous background before coming to Krishna consciousness. That would be inappropriate. Discuss the importance within this con of applying the appropriate attitude towards seeing external features of devotees with reference to text number six. The importance within ISKCON, because we are an international society, so we have people from all walks of life and from all parts of the world. So it's very important that we can apply that principle to see the internal feature of the devotee and not to be discriminating against someone on the basis of some external feature. Another, somebody may be diseased or handicapped or di so many different ways we may be uh, different from others. So we, should, we shouldn't be put off by external features Rather, we should appreciate the fact that they're chanting Hare Krishna and they're surrendered to Krishna. All right? So, if you will allow me, we'll go on to text number uh, eight. Text number seven was covering, oh, before, maybe we can, there was one. Text number seven was about the analogy of nations compared to the disease called jaundice. So we explained that analogy. I hope. Did we? Everyone satisfied? Yes, Mara. I'll just try to remember yes, where. Let's see. Lesson six. We were discussing this somewhere. Right, we've got up to here in our slideshow. Oh, wait, I have to make it first of all. I have to. <laughs> uh, can we put this on screen sharing? You have rights to screen share, Marav. Really? Yes. All right, so I have to go out of this, and here we are. <clears throat> okay, everyone can see? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, good.
I'm sorry, the fonts are wrong on this. I have to adjust this when I get time. Oh, all right, we were talking about the chanting of the Holy Name and the importance of chanting 16 rounds. And now we're bringing up the point that in order to chant effectively, one must promote himself to the platform of goodness, sattva gun, by following the instruction of Rupa Goswami and then everything concerning how to make future progress will be revealed. So first come up to the mode of goodness, that's very important. And this, this will be stressed a lot in other classes also, the importance of cultivating the mode of goodness. Because of the problem with our chanting, the problem with our chanting is due to anartas. So here we explain what, what these anartas are. They're classified into four different categories. Uh, this is taken from Shiva Ram Swami's book, but it's generally accepted that there are four different causes of anartas. First of all, offences. Then, secondly, material desires. Third, weakness of heart. Weakness of heart means, you know, we don't take it very seriously. We're still in, in trying to enjoy the material world. We're still thinking there's some happiness in material life. So we're not fully surrendered. And finally, ignorance of spiritual truth. So Shivaram Swami has written, those who fail to make such efforts miss the opportunity to gain the Holy Name's mercy, without which no one can surmount the obstacles to Krishna consciousness. So we have to try vigorously to get free from these anartas. Then we can taste the real nectar of the Holy Name. A quote from Banu Swami is talking about bhakti. He said, bhakti itself is klesh agni. In other words, it destroys misery. It destroys the misery and it produces anartha nivritti. The effects of genuine devotion is it will destroy the unwanted things in the heart. And so Maharaj says, perseverance in, in bhakti along with avoiding the unfavorable and following the favorable will effectively destroy anarthas. Then coming back to Shivaram Swami, transcendental knowledge acquired by studying Shastra and hearing from advanced devotees overcomes ignorance of spiritual truth. Ignorance of spiritual truth, we said that was one of the anarthas, one of the four kinds of anarthas. So we can remove that anartha by hearing from advanced devotees and studying the scriptures. A little table showing the stages at which the anarthas are destroyed. Hmm? We can see on the left different stages of bhakti, anartha nivriti, nishta, ruchi, asakti, bhava, prema, and attaining the Lord's lotus feet, the, the ultimate goal. And three different categories, you have bhakti, then you have sin and pious, and you have nama parad. So different stages of eradicating the anartas in devotion, then it's absolute when you get to the stage of ruchi. So you can see, to, get, to actually get rid of the anartas, we have to, we're not going to get 
up to Nista until we've removed all the anartas. And it, it becomes complete at the stage of Nishta. And it becomes even better for one who is a devotee. Someone else is just simply doing pious or sinful activities, then it's a little different. And if one is a Nama Paradi, an offender of the holy name, then he has to come right up to the top, right up to the, the shelter of the Lord's lotus feet to get full protection from his anartas. So you can see getting rid of anartas is it's a real challenge. We're all working on it, we're all endeavouring for that. Talking here now from Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he's talking about madness, pramada. The meaning is inattention or carelessness. And it is from this offence that all other offences spring. Right? If one is inattentive while chanting, then it brings all these other offences into play. Therefore, controlling the senses, avoiding bad association, taking good association is essential for being attentive. Right? We want to, we want to concentrate, we want to be attentive. It's very important that we learn to control the senses and avoid bad association and take good association. Then talking about inattention, inattention we see three different ways in which we can be inattentive. First of all, apathy. First of all, maybe somebody needs to turn their mic off. Apathy means we don't take it very seriously. Inactivity, that's like just laziness and distraction. We allow ourselves to be distracted. We take interest in other things. We chant with one hand and we hold the mobile phone in the other hand. Our attention is more on the mobile phone than on the chanting of the holy name. So different kinds of inattentiveness. And one gets free from these three types of inattentiveness. One can perform devotional, one, until we get free one cannot perform devotional service at all. Even if one gives up all other Namaparats. If he is still inattentive, he can never have attraction for the holy name. If one has enthusiasm in the beginning of devotional service and that enthusiasm does not become cold, then one will never become apathetic, lazy or distracted in chanting the holy name. So here's the key, the key to overcoming this inattention is to be enthusiastic, to really try to chant the holy name with great enthusiasm, with great endeavour, intense desire that we really want to taste the holy name. So that's a very important point. Chanting, Prabhupada said, like crying, for the, crying by the child for the mother to get the mother's attention. All right, so... Uh, well, you've got two questions here. Okay, we're, we're not ready yet, we'll wait. Okay. Then a, an, an interesting quote here. Could, could you please co control your mics? There's always this echo coming, please keep your mics off. Everybody's mic is off, Maharaj. I don't know where they... I can see them, the, everybody's mic is off. Really? Yeah. <laughs> must be my problem, then. I don't know how the echoes come. What can I do? Is it maybe I've got too loud, is it? It might be. <laughs> 
All right? Srila Prabhupada said, practice makes perfect, even in spiritual life. So the more we practice chanting, the more we become perfect in chanting. And he said, Srila Prabhupada said, probably to encourage us, he said, it took him 30 years to be able to chant the way he was chanting when we met him. So, we should be patient also, but determined and enthusiastic. Okay? So that's... Giriraj Swami Prabhupada personally told him it took him 30 years to be able to chant like that. So, you know, we have to be patient, at the same time determined. All right, we can take the questions. I've been talking about chanting. Okay, so you've got um, Satinandan Vishwambar Prabhu would like to ask something, and then Somya Mataji, and then Murli Govinda Prabhu. So Satinandan Vishwambar Prabhu, please go ahead. Hi Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Uh, Maharaj, as it was uh, written in the quote of His Holiness Bhanu Maharaj, that uh, by following uh, the regular, uh, uh, by following the prescribed and uh, abstaining from the bad habits, one can develop good taste in uh, chanting. But uh, my my thought to that was that isn't uh, it not that because of aparad we are not able to chant properly and because of aparad we are not able to follow what is we are supposed to do these things by that habit sometimes because we have we have aparad uh, sometimes so how is it like simultaneously possible that we have to uh, follow the regulative principles and we have to uh, do the uh, six prescribed things and then our aparad is go down aparad is what copy the simple it, it, it goes, should it go simultaneously that we endeavor and then a little bit of brand will go down? How does it work? Yes, well, I was clear. <laughs> simultaneously, as, as we follow, you know, certain points, Banu Swami is saying we're not able to chant with attention. But if we keep good association, it will help us to chant with attention. Right? So you're saying, if, if, if we're not chanting with attention, then we won't want to take good association. But Banaswami is giving the advice, if you really want to chant with attention, then get good association, and that will help you to chant the holy name better with attention, with proper attention. You know, if you, if you experience, you know, being in the temple room in the morning with many devotees, it can be very powerful to sit and chant the holy name. Everyone's chanting, nobody's talking. Generally it's the rule, you sit and chant, or you walk around and chant, you don't talk. So it's a powerful spiritual atmosphere to chant. But somebody else, you know, maybe you, you like to chant on your own, but when you're chanting on your own, you let your mind wander and you get involved in different things. Inattention comes. So the association is very important for us to chant properly to avoid offences. So he was making that point that if we follow, if we follow the uh, these uh, th do the things which are favorable for devotional service, like enthusiasm and determined confidence and patience, we if we have these qualities, we have this this attitude, then it will help a lot in our chanting. So, you, we can't say, well, I'm chanting offensively, so I cannot be enthusiastic. I don't agree. Yes, we may be committing offenses, but if we are serious that we really want to chant properly, then there are certain things we have to do in order to chant, with, to get the full potency of the Holy Name. The certain standards which we have to come up to, certain attitudes have to be developed. And then it helps to make our chanting more effective. Uh, 
Maharaj, regarding the, uh, the chart that you show of the anath nivritti. Yes. Now, uh, sometimes it, it, it is difficult to perceive that there is, if there is certain anatha which one is uh, having it in the heart and it is very difficult to even, be, uh, it becomes very difficult even to believe uh, eventually one, when one is an old devotee that this particular anatha will be able to get over with. Because it, uh, the, the part, uh, it's, it disturbs because of that anatha. It's, it's like starts, it, it is like happening again and again and again and again eventually in his life. When, when, uh, like some of, I'm able to reflect my uh, maybe 10 years and Krishna consciousness. So that particular anatha or few particular anathas like it keeps on coming again and again and again. And it seems whether I'll be able to overcome it in my whole life or uh, is the process working fine or uh, it, it, it brings doubt in the my mind. So just wanted your help on that. Well, we said one of the one of the important qualities which we have to develop is confidence. We have to feel that if I follow this process properly, then certainly I will get the result. So we have some habits, we have some anartas, and they may have been there a long time. But if we're really determined, which is another attitude, another very important quality, if we really have that determination, then certainly we'll be able to overcome it, even though it may have been there for a long time. So patience, as said here, uh, practice makes perfect. The more we become perfect, where was it? So practice makes perfect, even in spiritual life. So we have to practice, and we really. And if we're aware of something, we have some problem. We have some uh, anartas which have been there a long time. Still, they can be easily removed if we really want to get rid of them. So often we find people don't want to get rid of them. They're, they're attached to keeping them. They don't want to give up. They don't want to change. So this is the problem. It's not there's something wrong with the process. There's nothing wrong with the process. There's nothing wrong with the principles. It's all there. We just have to follow. But often we find somebody, they, they really don't want to give up their attachments. We become attached to these kind of habits. We're not willing to give them up. So this is the problem. We have to be willing to let go. And then we can get rid of these anartas. All right? Thank you much. Was there another question, Prabhu? Um, yes, let's go to Somya Mataji. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dharavatana. Uh, so we were discussing about the three types of offenses, uh, apathy, inactivity and distraction. Uh, what is inactivity and how should we overcome it? Maharaj? The three types of distraction, oh, well three types of, let's go back to that. Uh, three types of Inattentiveness. First of all, apathy, inactivity, and distraction. Inactivity is actually describing it later on as lazy, just simply lazy. You know, we chant, but oh, you know, you know, we lay, you know, we lay back, you know, <laughs> we don't sit properly, you know, we don't sit up straight, and we say, why well, I don't know why I'm falling asleep, you know. <laughs> Maybe if you sit properly, you could stay awake. So that's inactivity, type of laziness. Apathy is you know, you just think it's not important, it doesn't really mean much to you, you couldn't care. And distraction. You notice people, you're, you're watching your handphone and you're thinking, you know, different things are going on around you, you're not really concentrating on the Holy Name. 
Bhaktivinoda Thakur recommends uh, one way, he said, you can put a blanket over your head. <laughs> you put a blanket over your head, but don't fall asleep, that's a problem. <laughs> put the blanket over your head, and that can stop you from getting distracted. But it may have other effects, may have some other. Is that all right, Mataji? Yes, Mataji. Okay. Then you have um, Murli Govinda Prabhu. Uh -huh. Hare Krishna Mada, please accept my humble obeisances. Maharaj, we hear about uh, Srila Gaurakishore Das Babaji and uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur insisted his son at the time Bimala Prasad, that is Bhaktivinoda Saraswati Thakur, to take initiation from Srila Gaurakishore Das Babaji only. But up to that time, Gaurakishore Das Babaji had never initiated any disciples also. But uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur also insisted his son to take initiation from him. And even uh, Bhaktivinoda also, he prayed uh, Bhaktivinoda like uh, Gaurakishore Das Babaji like anything. Then Gaurakishore Das Babaji was saying, I am not very educated, you are very top level educated person, you know everything, so I cannot uh, give you initiation. You cannot become my disciple then. Uh, but this is down to say that uh, what is the use of this life? So I will commit suicide in that. How do we understand the Maharaj? This concept. Bhakti Siddhanta deciding to take uh, initiation from Gaurakishore Das Babaji and even Bhakti Vinod Thakur also insisted his son to take initiation from. How do we understand? Well, we understand that Gorkishore Das Babaji was a very advanced devotee and Bhaktivinoda Thakur recognized him as being genuinely renounced and being also a very strong devotee. Gorkishore Das Babaji used to come there to Bhaktivinoda Thakur and he would hear Srimad Bhagavatam. Bhaktivinoda Thakur would lecture and Gorkishore Das Babaji would be, be there. Sometimes they would discuss Krishna's pastimes, Krishna's qualities. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur recognized the internal qualities of Gorkishore Das Babaji. And he, he, Bhaktivinoda Thakur wanted his son to take initiation. He knew he, that the initiation cannot come from the father. It has to come from somebody else. So he considered Gorkishore Das Babaji to be the, the suitably qualified person. So Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati also understood it was a very good move for him because he had studied so much material knowledge, he had been offered a post as a professor at the Calcutta University and so on. He was very enlightened, very learned in so many languages and very erudite. And Gorkishore Das Babaji was illiterate practically. So he understood it was a very good training for him that he should not just simply be concerned with the external, but he should look at the internal quality of the person. So we also heard that he was in so much of ecstatic love of Krishna. Sometimes he used to eat the mud in that Jimna river and uh, he used to survive on that eating dust and uh, mud from uh, Brindavan uh, Rajabhumi also. And uh, even uh, he used to chant uh, continuously day and day and night also, uh, uh, entering into the washroom and uh, locking inside. So that is uh, actually it's pure exact love for Krishna and it is all in him. Okay. So thank you very much for sharing that with us. Right? Hare Krishna. We'd like Thank to go much. on. Right? So advancing from Shraddha up to Baba and Prema. Someone could read for us? I can read, Maharaj. Please. <clears throat> um, by devotion.
dimensional surface only is one elevated to the transcendental planet, Goloka Vrindavan. And there also, there is only devotional service. For the activities of devotional service, both in this world and in the spiritual world, are one and the same. Devotional service does not change the example, does not change. The example of a mango can be given here. If one gets an unripe mango, it is still a mango. And when it, when it is ripe, it remains the same. But it has become more. Okay, okay, so, so they, okay, was, a, was there a last line? I didn't see. But it becomes more, that's so. Okay. All right, all right, so the example of the mango, devotional service. Our mango, you could say we're like a mango, we're not ripe, but as we go on, come to the stage of bhava, that is the ripened stage. All right, the seed is there, the fruit is developed, just the, the fruit is not ripened. So devotional service does not change. We serve Krishna here, we go on and serve Krishna there. All right, we'll go ahead. Uh, we want to go on to text number eight. And then I'll open the other one. Let's see, text number. All right, text number eight. Here's the text. Let's read the text first because there are some points which we need to look at. Okay, I'll, would someone like to chant text number eight, Sanskrit? Yes. You're on mute, Chidananda Nimai Prabhu. That's it. Yes, Prabhu. Am I audible now? Yes, you're audible now. Okay. 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 <laughs> Yes, you can read the translation, Prabhu. The essence of our advice is that one should utilize one's full time, 24 hours of the day, in nicely chanting and remembering the Lord's divine name, transcendental form, qualities, and eternal pastimes, thereby gradually engaging one's tongue and mind. In this way, one should reside in Raja, Goloka Vindavana Dhamma, and serve Krishna under the guidance of devotees. One should follow in the footsteps of the Lord's beloved devotees, who are deeply attached to His devotional service. All right. The mind All right. That's that's it. That's it. And Haribo, Haribo. One has to train the mind to become his Haribo. The Krishna consciousness movement is especially meant for the mind to be always engaged in Krishna's business. I don't know. I, I, I muted him. <laughs> <laughs> Am I muted? I don't know. I couldn't, huh? Can you, you were meant to stop there. Thank you. All right. Yeah, we just wanted the text. I want to hear the text, right? Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, we're so, okay. so the, the important word there comes at the end of the Sanskrit, the Upadesha Saram. Upadesha Saram. The essence of all advice or instruction. Right? What is that essence of all advice or instruction? This is one of the questions actually for the closed book there. The essence of all advice is one should utilize one's full time in nicely chanting and remembering the Lord's name and transcendental form, qualities, pastime, etc. All right, so this, is, this uh, verse is about that, this subject matter how we can become more absorbed in remembering Krishna. And it, uh, Rupa Goswami is going to go into describe here about going to Braja, in the mood of Braja, as it said here, it, 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 in, in this way you should reside in Braja, Goloka Vrindavan Dham. Right? Not that you have to go there to 
Gokul Vrindavan, but Goloka Dham, and serve Krishna under the guidance of devotees. And so Rupa Goswami is introducing us to the practice of Raganuga Bhakti in these later verses. Beginning 8, 9, 10 and 11 is mainly focusing on Braja, uh, the Raga Bhakti, Raganuga Bhakti. And you will come also into, you will study also Raganuga Bhakti in, when you study Nectar of Devotion because there's a, a section there, there's a couple of chapters dealing with Raganuga Bhakti. So we need to know it, we need to be familiar with it. It's, it's uh, the advanced stage of devotion, right? There, Nectar of Devotion explains devotional service in three categories. Sadhana Bhakti, Bhava Bhakti and Prema Bhakti. And it's explained how Sadhana Bhakti is in two parts. First of all, is according to the rules and regulations. That's called Vaidhi Bhakti. And then spontaneous devotion is called Raga Bhakti. Spontaneous attachment for Krishna. Prabhupada gives the example, like in the beginning, to get to Mongol RT, you need an alarm clock to wake us up. Maybe even the alarm clock's not enough. Somebody has to shake us and tell us, Mongol RT Prabhu. But after some time, after you've been a devotee some time, you become more regulated and you wake up naturally. You wake up even before time, but earlier than you usually wake up, because you're so eager to go to Mongol RT. So it becomes spontaneous. So the same way the practice of devotion to Lord Krishna becomes spontaneous, Raga Bhakti. Nobody has to tell us to chant. We're always chanting. We're constantly thinking about Krishna and chanting the holy name and singing songs about Krishna. So this is Raga Bhakti, where the mood of devotion is more spontaneous. Right? So Prabhupada talks first of all about the, uh, the mind and controlling the mind, very important for us, make friends with the mind. And then he goes in to describe, uh, what's, at the time of death, whatever we're thinking, we'll take that body. So we want to train our mind so that we can come to the, to the spiritual world, Goloka Vrindavan. So we should be able to think of Krishna. So we have to practice thinking of Krishna now. And then Prabhupada also talks about the tongue, training, training the tongue to only speak about Krishna, to only taste Krishna prasada. And then Prabhupada speaks about Rupa Goswami's advice. And Rupa Goswami said, one should live in Vrindavan or any part of Brajabhumi. Brajabhumi or the land of Vrindavan is supposed to be 84 kroshas in area. One krosha is two square miles. When one makes Vrindavan his residence, he should take shelter of an advanced devotee there. In this way, one should always think of Krishna and his pastimes. And then Prabhupada quotes more from Srila Rupa Goswami, from his Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. A devotee should always reside in the transcendental realm of Braja and always engage in Krishna Smaran Janmachasya Prestam, the remembrance of Sri Krishna and his beloved associates. By following in the footsteps of such associates and by entering under their eternal guidance, one can acquire an intense desire to serve the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Then Prabhupada quotes more about Rupa Goswami, gives more advice. They said, in the transcendental realm of Braja, one should serve the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna with a feeling similar to that of his associates. And one should place himself 
under the direct guidance of a particular associate of Krishna and should follow in his footsteps. This method is applicable both in the stage of sadhana, spiritual practices executed, while in the stage of bondage. You know, we are sadhakas, we are doing sadhana, we are not yet perfect. And in the stage of sadhya, God realization, when one is a siddha purush or a spiritually perfect soul. So we can understand, uh, just like uh, Rupa Goswami himself, he would do sadhana, externally he would chant the holy name and he would do the activities of sadhana, worship the deity and offer obeisances and all of these things. But he would also have his internal practice. In the stage of sadhya, in the stage of sadhya, he is Rupa Manjari. And as Rupa Manjari, then he is associating with Lord Krishna and the gopis, and there's many activity, different activities going on. So that's the Siddha, per, Siddha Purush, spiritually perfect soul. You see two stages. There's the sadhana and the sid siddha. So at both stages, one should be Krishna conscious. One should serve Krishna. One should be under the guidance of an associate of Krishna, follow in the footsteps. Then Prabhupada quotes Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur's from his commentary on Upadesha Amrita, and we'll hear how it's described, how we should practice remembering Krishna and uh, concentrating the mind more in hearing about Krishna so that we can come to the stage of perfecting our Krishna consciousness. I'll just read it through. One who has not yet developed interest in Krishna consciousness should give up all material motives and train his mind by following the progressive regulative principles, namely chanting and remembering Krishna and his name, form, quality, pastimes and so forth. In this way, after developing a taste, so not this, in the beginning he's a neophyte, he doesn't have much interest, he's not yet developed interest in Krishna consciousness. But after developing a taste for such things, then one should try to live in Vrindavan and pass his time constantly remembering Krishna's name, fame, pastime and qualities under the direction and protection of an expert devotee. This is the sum and substance of all instruction regarding the cultivation of devotional service. In the neophyte stage, one should always engage in hearing Krishna Kata. This is called Shravana Das, the stage of hearing. By constantly hearing the transcendental holy name of Krishna and hearing of his transcendental form, quality and pastimes, one can attain to the stage of acceptance called Varanadasha. And when one attains this stage, he becomes attached to the hearing of Krishna Kata. When one is able to chant in ecstasy, he attains the stage of Smaranavasta, the stage of remembering recollection, absorption, meditation, constant remembrance and trance are five items of progressive Krishna smarana. At first, remembrance of Krishna may be interrupted at intervals, but later remembrance proceeds into uninterrupted. Right? So in the beginning, we're not, our mind is not steady, but with practice it becomes uninterrupted. 
and that continues. When the remembrance is uninterrupted, it becomes concentrated and is called meditation. When meditation expands and becomes constant, it is called anusmriti. By uninterrupted and unceasing anusmriti, one enters the stage of samadhi or spiritual trance. After smaranadash or samadhi, one has fully developed the soul comes to understand his original constitutional position. At that time, he can perfectly and clearly understand his eternal relationship with Krishna. This is called Sampati Das, the perfection of life. All right? So, in this way, Prabhupada, well, he's giving us from Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati, Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati had described these different progressive progressions in concentrating the mind in remembrance of Krishna and how beginning by hearing then we come to the stage of meditating and the mind becomes absorbed in remembering and we can go on to come to the stage of samadhi and ultimately realize our swarup or our eternal relationship with Krishna. All right? So this is, uh, you, we, we read about, you know, the Goswamis, that sometimes they would be meditating on the pastimes of Krishna and like that. So this is how they come, they get to the stage that they can concentrate the mind. Continuing the purport, Chaitanya Charitamrita advises those who are neophytes to give up all kinds of motivated desires and simply engage in the regulative devotional service of the Lord according to the direction of scriptures. In this way a neophyte can gradually develop attachment for Krishna's name, fame, form, qualities and so forth. When one, is a, when one has developed such attachment, he can spontaneously serve the lotus feet of Krishna, even without following the regulative principles. Now, that doesn't mean that he can take intoxication or gamble or do things like that. It means without following the regulative principles of bhakti yoga like taking bath three times a day and offering obeisances to the forefathers and these kind of things, right? So when one is spontaneously serving the lotus feet of Krishna, he, he, he's not obliged to follow the regulative principles of bhakti. This stage is called raga bhakti or devotional service in spontaneous love. At that stage, devotee can follow in the footsteps of one of the eternal associates of Krishna in Vrindavan. This is called Raganuga Bhakti. Raganuga Bhakti or spontaneous devotional service can be executed and then Prabhupada is going to describe the different rasas. Santaras, where one aspires to be like Krishna's cows, or the stick, or flute in the hand of Krishna, or the flowers around Krishna's neck. In Dasharas, one follows in the footsteps of servants like Chitrak, Patrak, and Raktap. And in the friendly Sakyaras, one can become a friend like Baladev, Sridam or Sudama. In Vatsalyaras, characterized by paternal affection, one can become like Nanda Maharaj, Mother Yashoda, and in Madhuryaras, characterized by conjugal love, one can become like Srimati Radharani or her lady friends, such as Lalita, her serving maids, like Rupa, Rati, this is the essence of all instruction in the matter of devotional service. 
please note the particular names of the different devotee personalities mentioned by Srila Prabhupada in the different rasas, that they're all connected with Vrindavan. You know, we could say, well, Arjuna is also the friend of Krishna, but Arjuna is not really involved in Vrindavan Leela. Hanuman is also a servant, but Hanuman is also not in Braja Leela. You see, so the, the names which are given by Srila Prabhupada are all uh, in connection with Braja, with Vrindavan, because it's in Vrindavan where Krishna is performing these pastimes. And one is encouraged this, to develop this uh, Raga, Raga Bhakti, this Raga Bhakti which Prabhupada describes as spontaneous love. Devotional service in spontaneous love. We, we, this mood of spontaneous love has to be. You, you, we have to be qualified for that, and the qualification to come to this kind of stage is you have gone through anartha nivritti. You've got rid of all the anarthas. You've come to the stage of nista, and you've come up to ruchi even. You've got this taste and you've developed a very strong taste to hear about Krishna and to chant about Krishna and to serve Krishna. And you just want to, re you just, uh, our focus of our attention can go entirely into these pastimes of Krishna, particular pastimes. And one should develop an attraction to a particular devotee like one may be attracted to a gopi, like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the other people in Jagannath Puri, they were all mainly following the mood of the gopis. But one may also have the mood of Mother Yashoda and follow in the footsteps of Mother Yashoda. So Raganuga Bhakti, if one is very attracted to Mother Yashoda, then one would absorb their mind in remembering all the, the pastimes of Mother Yashoda, how she chases Krishna and how she binds up Krishna and how she's always feeding her breast milk to Krishna. So one becomes absorbed in remembering the different dealings of a particular devotee. This is the mode of Raganuga Bhakti and it will depend on different devotees. Different devotees will have different tastes. Someone's taste may be to be a cowherd boy and someone's taste is to be a gopi. Well, it can be different for different devotees. All right, so this is the essence of all advice. Uh, in relation to the objectives, We've talked about the progressive stages of hearing and Krishna Smaranam, right? Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati has described these different stages of hearing and remembering Krishna. You can see something very, it's something like that in even could, in some ways there's similarity to Astanga Yoga and the later stages of Astanga Yoga. After Pranayam, then it becomes Pra, uh, prajahara, dar, dharana, dhyana, and samadhi. So remembering Krishna, you can see also meditation is there, dhyana, and samadhi is also there, and contemplation, that's a dharana. So we have five different stages of remembrance of Krishna, concentration of the mind. Five items of progressive Krishna Smarana. All right, any questions on this before we go on? So, Marat, I have a question from Harsha Mataji who is asking, Srila Prabhupada said we must be 70% Krishna conscious. What, do you, what does it mean by 70% Krishna conscious? Well, it means you're not pure, right? It means you still have some, some atta attachments, but 
you're you're seventy percent there. You still have a bit to go. You still have some things holding you back. Yeah. Prabhupada would at different times in different situations. Prabhupada would speak words to encourage the devotees. So Prabhupada is encouraging that even though we're not completely pure, if we've got some attachment for Prabhupada, some attachment for the holy name of Krishna, although there's still some problems, we still have some defects, but you know, if we have 70%, we have a good chance. Krishna, that Krishna, Prabhupada will come. And Krishna says also, I carry what you lack, right? So we're lacking something, Krishna can take care of it. We take shelter of Prabhupada, we have connection to Krishna's pure devotee, and Krishna will take care of us. Yes. And then um, Chagai Nitai Prabhu is asking in the earliest day, in Anartha Nivriti, and as we progress, we get tastes. And with that taste, we clear offences and so on. How do we engage in anartha nivriti without taste? Well, we have some taste. There has to be some some taste there. But is it? Our taste will be conditional, just like uh, taste. You know, we may be depending a lot on different elements for our taste. You know, we want to see nice, beautiful deity worship. We want to have the best kirtan. Everybody should be expert in playing the instruments, and like that. But as one progresses, then one will become indifferent to these things. That he, you know, he, he sees the deity, even though the deities are not really worshipped in a an elaborate manner or in the best way with the best dresses and the nicest ornaments but still we see the deity and we're satisfied it's krishna and the same way the chanting of the holy name even though so many people can't play the instruments right and the singing's no good and, but still they're chanting the holy name and we're impressed oh this kirtan so nice so that's taste you know that a taste which is beyond conditioning, but beyond identifying with the material elements. A spiritual taste. Thank you, Maharaj. That was a really good answer. Um, Chakani Thais saying. Um, can, can we go to Gadadhar Prabhu? Yes, Hare Krishna Maharaj. So, uh, it is mentioned about the external and internal practice. I a bit miss about uh, that point. So please kindly uh, explain one more second. External and internal practice. Well, I was explaining in relation to the case of Srila Rupa Goswami, that Srila Rupa Goswami, externally, he's coming as a devotee of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and he's performing his sadhana, chanting the holy name, and offering obeisances, doing parikrama, worshipping the deity, writing books. But he has also his spiritual identity. In the spiritual world, Rupa Goswami is Rupa Manjari, and he's assisting in the pastimes of Radha and Krishna. So internally, he can meditate on the pastimes of Rupa Manjari as he assists in the pastimes of Radha and Krishna. So sometimes we hear about Rupa Goswami, how he would be sitting meditating, he'd be sitting, think he absorbed in the pastimes of Radha and Krishna. And you know, people around him wouldn't know what he's thinking or what is what's happening, but he would be sitting and he'd be with Radha and Krishna and taking part in their pastimes. So that's internal contemplation, internal meditation. So, uh, it, 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 is it possible for us uh, uh, 
related to the external practice uh, I mean for us to uh, in the new pipe no no not possible our, what we have to do is purify ourselves by chanting the holy name and hearing about Krishna and we have to come to the perfect stage until we become perfect we don't know our spiritual identity so we simply think of ourselves as a servant of Krishna right jivarupahai nitya krishna das we're all servants so we think of ourselves that way as a servant of Krishna and we engage in hearing and chanting absorb ourselves hearing and chanting and we have to get rid of the anarthas, get rid of the offences, get, you know, it has to become pure chanting. And then as we go on with pure chanting and pure hearing, then we will come to understand more about our position in relation to Krishna. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Can we, can we take two more, Maharaj? Yes. Okay. Um, then Harish very Madhuri Madhuji. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Maharaj, I have one doubt. Uh, is this uh, Raga Bhakti and Raga Rupa Bhakti are the same or is there any difference? Yeah. Raga Bhakti and Raga Nuga Bhakti? Well, yeah, somebody asked me that yesterday also uh, when we were discussing this with the other class. Uh, looking at it here in the text, now Prabhupada mentions here, first of all he said, this stage is called Raga Bhakti, right? This stage, what stage is it? Where one can spontaneously serve the lotus feet of Krishna. He has developed such an attachment that he can spontaneously serve the lotus feet of Krishna even without following the regulated principles. This is called Raga Bhakti or devotional service in spontaneous love. And then later on Prabhupada says, uh, at this stage the devotee can follow in the footsteps of one of the eternal associates of Krishna and Vrindavan. This is called Raga Nuga Bhakti. So Raga Nuga Bhakti is following in the footsteps of one of the devotees of Vrindavan. Right? Raga Bhakti is talking about having that spontaneous attraction to Krishna, but when, it, when you actually start to follow in the footsteps of a particular devotee, then the, you could say this is Raga Nuga Bhakti. I, I don't really see a, a, any difference between the two, to tell you the truth. The, it, they seem... You know, Raga Nuga Bhakti or Raga Bhakti, it, it's the same thing. Just simply Raga Nuga is talking about following in the footsteps of a great devotee. Hmm? The eternal associates of Krishna, following in the foot, And they must all be associates of Krishna in Vrindavan, not any other place. We're talking, Raga Nuga Bhakti is only done in Vrindavan, it's the mood of Vrind in Vrindavan, and the devotees and Krishna's associates in Vrindavan. People from outside Vrindavan, you know, like the Pandavas, Arjuna, and like that, you know, they're not from Vrindavan, you know, they don't fit into Raga Nuga Bhakti. Raga Nuga Bhakti, you're, follow, you're dealing with the, the Bridge Basi people. Nanda Maharaj, Mother Yusha, Vasudev and Devaki, they're not Brishpasi people. They're in Mathura, they're in Dwarka, but they're not in Vrindavan, really. And so Raga Nuga Bhakti is following in the footsteps, and Raga also indicates this spontaneous desire to serve the lotus feet of Krishna. Can we go to then Raja Vidya Prabhu? Thank you, Shamaraj. Please accept my application, Maharaj. So, Maharaj, uh, in our current state, 
of um, having I mean, following the sixth sign, Diksha Guru, can that be compared something to Raga Nuga Bhakti or not? Oh, no, not at all. You have one more. Do you want to take it or do you want to move on? Yeah. Okay. Um, Satinandan Vishwamba, please go ahead. Thank you, Prajit. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, I wanted to understand what does it mean by uh, following the uh, Raga Bhakta, the following the uh, uh, pure devotees of Krishna? What does it mean if then it's like having attraction to Yashoda Mahi? So, what does it mean to following them? It means to hear about them and to hear about their activities and constantly remember about how they perform different things, different incidents which took place in their pastimes with Krishna. Okay. And uh, just one more thing. Uh, as it is very special in Rupa Swami that uh, uh, in this way, one should live in Vrindavan. So, uh, what does it mean? One should, I mean, uh, is it referring to Dhamvas or it is like it's a matter of consciousness about living in Vrindavan? Well, if one is actually able to go and li live in Vrindavan, very good. Otherwise, at least within the mind, try to live in Vrindavan. Okay. Hmm. If you can, if, you, if possible, then it's very good to go there to Vrindavan and stay there. Certainly the atmosphere is very powerful and spiritual. And Prabhupada does write about it. He recommends it. You know, he said, uh, even if we're, in, 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 he said in our early life we can travel and preach everywhere. And then in old age we can go to Vrindavan, sit down and read the books of the Goswamis. All right, uh, I want to switch now. We'll go to the um, PowerPoint in relation to this. There is a PowerPoint uh, which explains some things about it. Let's see, process of hearing. Uh, We'll start from here. Would someone like to read, please? Krishna Mara, Dandak Pranam. Wait, but can, can you hold on a minute, Muri Govinda Prabhu? Can we go to somebody who hasn't read? Um, perhaps Dhamodar Dina Pavana Prabhu. Would you get it? Dhamodar Dina Pavana Prabhu, please go ahead. Thank you. Despite this decision, if one with great care attention takes to Krishna consciousness, acting the holy name and hearing Krishna's transcendental content, this oh, lost here. Are you seeing my slide okay? Ah, yes, Maharaj. We can't hear you, Prabhu. Okay, let's try somebody else then. Let's let's go to Apurva Nila Charesh very much. Can you, on? <clears throat> Can you read this? Despite this disease, if one with great care and attention takes to uh, Krishna consciousness, chanting the holy name and hearing Krishna's transcendental pastimes, his ignorance will be destroyed and his tongue enabled to taste the sweetness of the transcendental nature of Krishna and his paraphernalia. Should I uh, read the next? Um, Continue. Yeah. Chaitanya Charitamrita advises those who are neophyte to give up all kinds of motivated desires and simply engage in the regulated principle of devotional service to the, of the Lord according to the direction of the scripture. All right, so this order of the Guru, what we need to do, we're near fights. We have to give up our motivated desires, that's the hard part, right? We have a lot of motivated desires. But if we engage in devotional service, that will purify the heart 
and gradually we'll lose our attraction for the material things. Or the fonts are off. Anyway, maybe you can just read the English. Uh, or twice born creatures, by serving those devotees, are completely freed from all wise great By such service, one, ga uh, one gains the message of uh, Vasudeva. All right, so we, if we're lacking in taste for hearing, then it's very good for us to, to do more service for the devotees. Serving the pure devotees is very powerful and opens the doors to liberation. Please go ahead, read some more. Nowadays, it seems that many of the older disciples like yourself and are having difficulty. If you do not set the example for the younger students and take the responsibility for instructing them in the right line, you will, uh, how will things go on? Try to always study our books and see our philosophy from different lights of directions. Become convinced yourself of the of the knowledge and without a doubt all your difficulties of mind will disappear forever and you will see Krishna face to face. Okay, that's a letter Srila Prabhupada wrote, 1972. Can we have someone else read? Um, Chandravamshi Prabhu. Hey Krishna Muni Maharaj, can you, can you hear me? Yes. So, I want you leaders especially to become very much absorbed in the philosophy of Gita, Gita Bhagavatam and become yourselves completely convinced and free from all doubt. On this platform, you shall be able to carry on the work satisfactorily, but if there is a lack of knowledge or there is a forgetfulness, everything will be spoiled in time. So, especially you must encourage the students to read our book throughout the day as much as possible and give them all good advice how to understand the books and inspire them to study the thing from every point of view. In this way, by constantly engaging our tongues in the service of the Lord, either by discussing his philosophy or by chanting Hare Krishna. The truth is that Krishna himself will reveal himself to us and we shall understand how to do everything properly. Thank you very much. Another letter to Hansa Dura Prabhu. So Prabhupada is encouraging the devotees, read the books, study the books. And in this way, Krishna will reveal himself to us. And then a, a letter to Ganga Devi, Mataji. Prabhupada said, Chant without fail 16 rounds of Hare Krishna mantra daily. Read Srimad Bhagavatam at least one hour daily. And in this way, without any doubt, you will very soon become very happy and your life will be sublime. This is a nice verse from Lord Kapila's teachings in the third canto Srimad Bhagavatam about the importance of hearing. Satam prasanga mama virya samvido bhavanti ritkarana rasayana kata tach joshanada shapavarga vartmani in the association of pure devotees, discussion of pastimes and activities of Krishna is very pleasing and satisfying to the ear and the heart. By cultivating such knowledge, one can gradually become advanced on the path of liberation and thereafter is freed and its attraction becomes fixed. Then real devotion and devotional service begin. Right? Sradharati bhakti anukramishyati. So, 
it comes from by good sadhana, we will come to Baba and Prema. They will follow naturally. This is how? Simply by hearing about Krishna in the association of devotees. That's Lord Kapila's instruction to his mother. Someone like to read this? Um, Raj of India, Prabhu? Yes, thank you, Maharaj. Uh, non devotees cannot appreciate Krishna. Krishna consciousness by reading the Srimad Bhagavatam or any other Vedic literature wherein the activities of the Lord are described. They think that these activities are fictional, manufactured stories because spiritual life is not explained to them in the proper mood. To understand the personal activities of the Lord, one has to seek the association of devotees. And by such association, when one contemplates and tries to understand the transcendental activities of the Lord, the path of liberation is open and he is freed. One who has firm faith in Supreme Personality of Godhead becomes fixed and his attraction for association with the Lord and the devotee increases. All right. Sri Mahath Bhagavatam, 10 to 3, verse 25, 25. Right, that's from the purport of the verse we just read. in Satam Prasanga, Mamavir. So Prabhupada is emphasizing the importance associating with devotees and hearing and in this way purifying our heart. Don't associate with non-devotees. Yes? Somebody else like to read? Um, Acharya Nanda Prabhu, go ahead. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Um, my voice audible? Yes. Simple hearing is not all. One must realize the text with proper attention. The word nivit ni 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 the the point was not clear. Yeah, sorry about that. Go ahead. Means that Sutta Goswami drank the juice of Bhagavatam to his ears. That is the real process of receiving Bhagavatam. One should hear with rapt attention from the real person and then he can at once realize the presence of Lord Krishna in every page. The secret of knowing Bhagavatam is mentioned here. No one can give rapt attention to pure in mind. No one can be pure in mind who is not pure in action. No one can be pure in action who is not pure in eating, sleeping, fearing, and mating. But somehow or other, if someone hears with rapt attention from the right person, at the very beginning one can assure, assuredly see Lord Krishna in person in the pages of Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam 1.3.44-4. Yes, this is a very well-known purport, often quoted. This is a, the last verse of the third chapter where Srila Vyasadeva or Sutta Goswami had been describing the Lord's different incarnations and Prabhupada is explaining what is important that we have to not not only just hear but we have to actually realize we have to, and in order to realize the text we have to be pure and we have to we have to be pure in our activities but then Prabhupada said if we simply hear with rapt attention. So from the right person you can see Krishna in the pages of Srimad Bhagavatam. So seeing Krishna. So Prabhupada wanted very much, distribute his books. If you want to please me, distribute my books. A famous quote. So, what is Srila Rupa Goswami's Upadesha Amrita? Upadesha Saram. Upadesha Saram. Prabhupada explains, the more we study the pastimes of the Lord, the more we become attached to Him. This very attachment to Krishna makes one eligible to be transferred to His abode, Goloka Vrindavan. 
from Krishna book. So, what is that Upadesha Saram? Upadesha Saram, that one should t utilize his time 24 hours a day, hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. And here we see the same point made from Prabhupada's summary of Krishna's pastimes, Krishna book, becoming attached to Krishna. Another quote, also from Krishna book, chapter 46, to remain always absorbed in Krishna consciousness was the standard of the inhabitants of Vrindavan. If we can simply follow in their footsteps, even to a minute proportion, our life will surely become successful. Where does it say, but following in the footsteps of the gopis? Following in the footsteps of the inhabitants of Vrindavan? Anybody know a verse? Chinandana Vishnu Prabhu, is that an answer? Are you trying to answer the question? No, I, I just raised my hand because I wanted to question. I wanted to, uh, my question to be asked. Okay, we'll come back to that question then. In that case, let's go to Karuna Sindhu Prabhu. You, you raised your hand. Do you know the answer to this? Yeah, it's there that Gopi Bhartur Padakamale or Das Das Yes, thank you, Prabhu. Yes, right. That's the verse we often quoted, right? That we say, I'm not a Brahmana, Kshatri, Vaishya, Sudra, I'm not a Sanyasi, a Vanaprastha, a Grihastha, a Brahmachari, I'm simply the servant of the servant of the servant, follower of the gopis of Braja. Right? Gopi Bhart. Very good, right? Okay. And just speaking, of, oh, oh, we had a question? Yes, from, you've actually got two, I think you've got one, oh, you've got one, sorry, from Satyanandan Vishwambar Prabhu. Oh, you got two, yeah, <laughs> I beg your pardon, you got him and then Krishna Vijay, that's okay. Uh, Maharaj, this question is regarding the purport which we read of the Satam Prasangar first. Can, can, uh, can you please go back to the slide, it will be more easy for me to ask, in which it was written that uh, one, uh, his hearing cannot be perfect with uh, that. Uh-huh. This one? Yeah, perfect. No, it is like, uh, it's, it appears to be uh, a, a little uh, confusing and a little uh, really contradictory. No one can give rapt attention who is not pure in mind and then all these things, so who is not uh, pure in actions and all. And simultaneously, Srila Prabhupada writes that if one somehow, uh, if, if one hears with rapt attention, so is it like, uh, if he's not there with mind and he's not there with actions, maybe he's not there with uh, the four regulative principles, then also then if he somehow gives that attention, that appears to be something. Well, Prabhupada's giving a special, making a point that the, the power of hearing, that even one is not very pure, but somehow if he hears from the right person, and if he hears very, somehow or other, someone hears with rapt attention from the right person, then, and, and that, that can be the very beginning, and that can bring out a big change in the person. It can actually see Krishna. So Prabhupada is describing the power, yeah, the power of hearing. The power of hearing is so powerful that even one may not be very strict, not very pure, but if he gives rapt attention to hear from someone. No, even someone, we know sometimes that people are not very pure, but somehow they really pay attention, they're really listening. Okay. And uh, just another short question. Uh, it's uh, what, what does the term motivated desire mean? We read it uh, What does that particular term mean? Motivated desires. Well, you you have some purpose behind what you want. You have, you know, some purpose. It's it's. You have a desire. Maybe you have a desire. Maybe we, we want to have better prasadam, right? Maybe you think the prasadam is not good enough. We want to have more opulent prasadam. Maybe your and your motivation is that you can eat more. So behind anything, there has to be some motivation. Is it only just referring for the material desire? Or it's like well, it can be spiritual. 
we can have spiritual desires. That's good. That's very nice if you have spiritual desires. Okay, we'll go ahead. Oh, all right, now Shiva Ram is describing here about this uh, Brajabhakti process. Because some people may say, you know, this is not very good, this is not what Prabhupada wanted, uh, Prabhupada didn't speak about it. But here, Shiva Ram Swami has written, he said that, to be Krishna conscious, to be Krishna conscious then means, to be Krishna conscious then means to qualify oneself for spontaneous devotion in one of the four mellows of Brajabhakti, as exemplified by Krishna's eternal companions. Because this understanding is confidential, Srila Prabhupada rarely spoke of it in public and wrote about it only sparingly in his books. Yet, because it is the essence of Krishna consciousness, His Divine Grace did talk about it, did write about it, and did expect thoughtful devotees to understand and carefully pursue it. So this way Shiva Ram is reve he's revealing his own particular interest, you could say also, that he's very much inclined to pursue this, and he goes into, he's very qualified. So what should be the mentality to move on from the rules and regulations to the spontaneous practice? He should be at the stage of nishta. After purifying, after gradually purifying the heart of unwanted things, devotees achieve a steadiness visible not only in their physical conduct, but also in their words and mental activities. Right? This is this, that they've come to this stage, the stage, nishta. Although not yet fully free of impurities, these devotees, master of their mind and senses, are no longer hostage to residual desires or bad habits. They're not yet fully free of it. Still subtle impurities may be there, right? But they are in control of their mind and senses, and they're, they, they're, they're not controlled, they're not tied up by material desires or bad habits. That's nishta. And then shravanam. They diligently study Srimad Bhagavatam and respectfully hear of the many incarnations but they are especially intrigued by Krishna's Vrindavan pastimes, and thus repeatedly hear Srila Prabhupada extol the unparalleled loving service of the Brajavasis. Most devotees, hearing in this way, acknowledge the wonder and uniqueness of Krishna's pastimes in Braja but are not yet moved to do more than hear about or discuss them. But a few devotees react dif differently. Heartfelt desire moves them when they hear Krishna's pastimes. They think, I would like to love and serve Krishna like the Brajbasis. Right? This is what it means to follow in the footsteps. They would like to develop that love and the mood of service as that particular devotee had. So, in order to do that, you have to get Guru Shiksha. The, a devotee has to reveal their minds to their Guru, continue their services, but the mood has changed. They feel a desire to achieve the perfection of Brajbasis and description of the Brajbasis service to Krishna dominate their hearts and minds. When the Guru is satisfied, particular disciples have qualification, he gives them suitable instructions. Even though Braja Bhakti is spontaneous, no one should enter its practice whimsically. One should always do so 
under the spiritual master's expert guidance. All right? Very important that we have to do it, we have to be guided by the spiritual master. That's essential. What is the symptom of genuine greed? That someone has a genuine greed to get this Braja Bhakti. So, it is described here, there should be complete distaste for anything not related to Krishna. Sincere devotees, anxious to hear constantly about Krishna, quickly become indifferent to the allurements of sense gratification and liberation because the bliss of remembering Krishna and his associates is so powerful that it subdues all non-devotional attachments. Right? Okay, and then from Prabhupada's Nectar of Devotion, somebody like to read for us? We must always remember, however, that such eagerness to follow in the footstep of denizens of Braja, Vrindavan, is not possible unless one is freed from material contamination. When one is actually spontaneously attracted to the loving principles of gopis, there will be found no trends of any mundane contamination in his character. Therefore, in the beginning, every, everyone should strictly follow the regulative principles of devotional service according to the injunctions of scriptures and the spiritual master. Only after the stage of liberation from material contamination can one actually aspire to follow in the footsteps of devotees in Vrindavan. Nectar of Devotion, page 270. Is this all clear to everyone? Oh, I'm muted now. I'm muted? Maharaj, you're muted. Yeah, how do I unmute myself? Oh, God. What Maharaj, do... you're muted. We can't hear you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> how, do, how to unmute? We can't hear you, Maharaj. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? I don't know how to unmute. Uh, you can only unmute uh, as your host. Oh, I'm. You can, he can unmute himself. He's a co host. Okay, Maharaj, we, can, can you speak? We couldn't hear you for a minute there. Can you hear me now? Oh, we can hear you now. Yes, thank you. Yes. Who? Somebody unmuted me. I, I tried to unmute you, but you are co host, so you're allowed to unmute and mute yourself. I don't know how I'm supposed to unmute. What am I supposed okay. to press? There's, there's at the bottom of your screen, you'll see participants, and to the left of that you'll see security, then video, then mute. If you click on that button, you can mute and unmute yourself. But at the bottom of the screen? I don't see anything. See the bar. There's nothing on the bottom of my screen. Or at the top of your screen, is there a little... Um, okay, now participants, okay. Yeah, and then you should see to the left of that somewhere possibly, or maybe to the right of it, a video and mute button. You should be able to use those. Okay, thank you. All right. <laughs> okay, so talking about greed. Giriraj Swami, someone like to read? Um, maybe go to Radhika Kishori Mataji. If greed is there and we hear of the conjugal pastimes of the Lord, then it will be beneficial. Otherwise, we will degrade into the lusty thoughts. Srila Prabhupada would say, in this regard, instead of purified, we will be putrefied. Yes, putrefied. <laughs> instead of purified, we will be putrefied. <laughs> putrefied means contaminated. We will become Disgusting, something unpleasant, putrefied. Someone please read. Uh, 
Yeah, would you like to read more, Prabhu? Could you? Ananta Vilasa Prabhu? Yes, Prabhu. Yes, Maharaj. This Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur recommends intensive counter propaganda. We should present the right conception of spontaneous devotion and thus stem the tide of immature practice. He further explains that spontaneous devotion is part and parcel of the soul and cannot be ignored. Instead, it should be understood through the teachings of Rupa Goswami by devotees surrendered to the lotus feet of their spiritual master. Shri Raman Swami Shuddha Bhakti Chintamani 271 and 272. Yeah. So... <laughs> Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati is quoted here as saying that this Raga Bhakti, this spontaneous devotion, is part and parcel of the soul and cannot be ignored. So it has to be understood. So how to apply it? Oh, if we had time we could do this role-playing. <laughs> Very interesting to do this. You know, because sometimes we do get devotees in ISKCON who get a bit involved in this kind of thing. And we did have an instance in Prabhupada's time, there were a group of devotees who were meeting. Now this is, in, we're talking about 1976 or 1977. And there was a, a group of devotees who were taking part, somehow they got together and they, they had their own little club and they would meet together and read sections of the Chaitanya Charitamrita about Lord Krishna's pastimes with the gopis. So when Srila Prabhupada heard about it, he was very upset. And he called all the members who had attended and he chastised them heavily. Told them this was very bad and this would ruin Iskon. So he was very concerned about it. But they said, well Prabhupada, we're reading your books. He said, yes, but look how you're reading and look what you're reading. You're, reading, you're only reading the, the most uh, esoteric sections of the Chaitanya Charitamrita. For example, there are sections where Lord Chaitanya is discussing with Ramananda Roy and, on very elevated topics. So they were focusing their attention on these things. But Prabhupada pointed out, what about the earlier sections? Have you understood everything from the beginning. And actually in course of time, all the people except for one devotee who was in that group, they all left Iskon. They all had spiritual problems. They had not controlled their mind and senses. They had not conquered the urges. They were going and hearing, but they were still polluted by material desires. They, they had not got through an Artha Navriti. So then it's very dangerous. Oh. Someone like to read? I can read. Yes, please. Yes. 
Maharaj ji, yeah, go ahead. In uh, Hare Krishna, in sadhakas who continue on the path of regulated devotion, who are not drawn to rag ragatmika bhakti, mature greed naturally appears at the stage of ecstasy. Like devotees who reach the reach ecstasy by spontaneous practice. Such sadhakas then plunge into the oceanic bliss of Raja Seva and frolic there eternally. Shivaram Swami Shuddha Bhakti Chintamani 270. So Maharaj is pointing out here that you don't have to follow this Ragatmika Bhakti. You can simply follow the regulative devotion, Vaidhi Bhakti, and it will come to the same thing. You can also go to Braja and get in, you can also go to Goloka Vrindavan and you can also enjoy the same ecstasy as these other people. Imanaji, please continue. Those following Lord Chaitanya's line by preaching and doing Sankirtana who are aware of Raga Bhakti, whose goal is Raja and Krishna in spontaneous devotion who are not doing Raganuga sadhana bhakti but are following regulated practice are not doing Aishwarya Vaiti sadhana they are following the Vidhi of Raga bhakti as appropriate to a world preaching organization Kali Yuga mentalities are most important of all as given to us by our perfect by our perfected Acharyas, Srila Prabhupada and Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakura, thus these devotees do not go to Vaikuntha, but as followers of Gauranga and his associates, they go to Golok Raja. Yam Yam Vapi Smaran Bhavam yeah, yeah, Yam Yam Vapi Smaran Bhava the essence of bhakti is its mood and intent. If the mood and intent are of ragatmika, it will take one to Goloka. Hare Krishna, the chat, the chat box is open, I cannot read. If it is for Aishwarya, it will take it one. For Aishwarya, sorry. It will take one to Vaikuntha. Vaikuntha. Thank you very much. Email from Shivaram. Swami. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. So, we may wonder, you know, what about somebody who's doing preaching, book distribution, Sankirtan, what's his position? You know, should we leave, should we stop doing that and just go and sit down in Brajit and Vrindavan? Should we just go to the holy place and sit down in Vrindavan? Not required. We can continue following. We can do our uh, we can do our bhakti the same way, even though we're preaching and doing sankirtan, and we'll get the same destination. He says that we're not actually doing, if you're doing preaching work and sankirtan, then you're not, you, 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 you're not doing this Aishwarya Vaidhi Sadhana. They are following the vidhi of Raga Bhakti. But we're following it as appropriate to a world preaching organization. So we have special mood, following Lord Chaitanya. Those devotees do not go to Vaikuntha. If you follow, if you're simply doing Vaidhi Bhakti, usually you'll go to Vaikuntha. But as followers of Goranga and his associates, we go to Goloka. Lord Chaitanya takes us to Goloka. That's the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. So very powerful to be connected to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Very important. And Lord Chaitanya takes us to, into Radha and Krishna. This is explained more here. Someone like to read? This is from Chaitanya Charitamrita. Please read. Please, yeah. One who is extremely fortunate may get the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. As much as one can devote his full attention to the lotus feet of Lord Chaitanya, 
to that extent he will be able to test the nectarian service of the lotus feet of shrimati radharani in braja the more one engages in the service of shri chaitanya the more one finds oneself in vrindavana tasting the nectar of the service of shri radha shrila prabodhana prabodhan prabodhanda saraswati shri chaitanya chandramata text 88 mm. oh good not chaitanya charitamrita chaitanya chandramrita Chai, right chaitanya chandramata uh. thank you maharaj oh, thank you maharaj So Prabodhananda Saraswati describing how by being connected to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu we can taste service to the lotus feet of Srimati Radharani. Because Lord Chaitanya comes to engage people in the service of Radharani. Lord Chaitanya's mood is Radha Bhav, right? Lord Chaitanya himself wants to experience this mood of Ra Srimati Radharani. So he, if we are connected to him, then he can allow us to also get the nectar of service to Srimati Radharani. Another similar quote. Yeah, can we have someone else read? Okay, we'd like um, Radha Rajvidya Prabhu. You're muted, Prabhu. You need to unmute. Yeah, sorry, Prabhu. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, This, this humble servant of Radha and her beloved Krishna always hopes for Kirtan and he begs all to loudly sing the names of Lord Hari. The transcendental power of congregation chanting in, in automatically awakens remembrance of Lord and his divine pastimes in relation to one's own eternal spiritual form. Only at that time does it become possible to go off to a solitary place and engage in the confidential worship of their lordship. Srila Bhaktisiddhartha Sai Thakur, Vaishnava K, translation of verse 19. So the power of kirtan, very important kirt, to take part in the kirtan and by congregational chanting, then we hope we will remember more the Lord and his divine pastime. Prabhupada was talking, you know, this was in, uh, in 1972, uh, the devotees were fighting to try to build the temple in Juhu, in Bombay, and they had so many troubles with the government and, you know, there were so many obstacles, the person who sold the land tried to cheat Prabhupada, there were so many issues. And so Tamal Krishna Maharaj was speaking to Prabhupada, he said, what hope is there? Instead of thinking of Krishna, I'm thinking of the temple finances. <laughs> so Prabhupada said, so many lifetimes we have wasted on ourselves. Now, for this one lifetime, let us work heart and soul to push on Lord Chaitanya's Sankirtan movement. Then, at the end of life, Lord Chaitanya will personally come and cover whatever we lack and take, take us back to Godhead, right? You were asking, maybe we only have 70%. So Prabhupada is saying, Lord Chaitanya will cover whatever we lack and take us back to Godhead. We just have to push on Sankirtan movement. A quote from Srimad Bhagavatam. O Lord, who resemble the shining sun, You are always ready to fulfill the desire of your devotee, therefore you are known as a desire tree, Kaupa, Vancha Kaupataru. When acharyas completely take shelter under your lotus feet in order to cross the fierce ocean of nations, they leave behind on earth the method by which they cross. And because you are very merciful to your other devotees, you accept this method to help them. So the Lord helps the devotees. If we take shelter, he will help. Oh. The duty of the guru is to find the means according to the time, circumstances and the candidate by which one can be induced to render devotional service. 
When Krishna accepts from a candidate who wants to be successful in going back home, back to Godhead, after wandering throughout the universe, a fortunate person within this material world seeks shelter of such a guru or acharya who trains the devotee in the suitable ways to render service according to the circumstances so that the personality of Godhead will accept the service. This makes it easier for the candidate to reach the ultimate destination. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 10, Chapter 2, Text number 31. And just one final quote here. Uh, this was Prabhupada talking to Swarup Damodar, who later became Bhakti Swarup Damodar Maharaj. Prabhupada's disciple from Manipur and you know he, he had been doing research in organic chemistry and he completed his PhD so Prabhupada wanted him to preach to the scientists and he was saying Prabhupada I just want to go more into Braja and Rasa Leela and the mood of the gopis and understand my Swarup but Prabhupada told him that by preaching that life comes from life and defeating the scientists, you will realize your Swarup in Braja. <laughs> so, you, if we're worried, we, you know, we want to go and sit in Vrindavan, better we just stay in our field and just preach. We will realize everything. You have to have faith, that's the point. Who, who, faith in Guru and in Krishna, equal. The guru is representative of Krishna. Some people say, oh, I have faith in Krishna. Someone else says, I have faith in Guru. They're not different. The Guru is representative of Krishna. So if we have faith in both Krishna and the Guru, all the imports of Vedic knowledge are automatically revealed. All right? Any questions? Sachinandana Vishambar Prabhu, you have a question. Uh, 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 Maharaj, just a humble request. Can, uh, can this slide be shared with us because uh, as uh, you were going on the re uh, reading all those uh, texts by Shivra Maharaj and Maharaj uh, Maharaj and other Punyakis, it was very interesting uh, to read them and I just wanted to re-read re them maybe. The slides can be shared. Um, the question, uh, well, I had maybe lots of questions but I would first like to read them and maybe if I can if we be allowed to come to with the questions later on we can take Well I think that, I think the session's all recorded, right? There's a video it recording. Is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. We we can give you the, the recording, you know, the website. You can download it. Okay, okay. I just I'll just uh, re uh, re read uh, the six and I'll come back to my questions. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else got any questions they'd like to ask Maharaj before we close? Raja Vidya Prabhu, is that a question? No, no, sorry Prabhu, I think that needs to be... Okay, I want to repeat that then. Sorry. All right, so it looks like there's no more questions. Oh, hang on, one question we do have. Apurva Nila Cheshvari Mataji. Nila Cheshvari. I have a question. But it is not useful to today's class, so can I ask you? So Mataji is saying she has a question but it's not related to today's class. Will you take it? Or All right, anyone? yeah, okay. okay. All right, Mataji. Yeah, I have a question like, uh, uh, it came in my mind like few days before like when Mataji she asked question like if someone, uh, you know, someone uh, like offend us or someone uh, bully us, so what, how should we take that? So Maharaj, uh, you have uh, uh, you, uh, you've answered like, no, you should take it as like a purification, like we, you should be thanked to the person who has bullied, because it will purify us and uh, like that uh, we should take, but what if sometimes it happens like because of uh, like people too much bully someone or you know to make fun of someone or offend someone People lose their you know, self um, self confidence or any like they their self esteem. So in that case, what should be uh, what should be done? <laughs> well, 
if we if we lose our self esteem, we lose our self confidence. That is simply due to bodily attachment, to bodily identification. What we really need to do is become more Krishna conscious, and we need to chant the holy name, and we need to study the philosophy more and get out of this bodily conception of life, because we're not only the gross physical body, but the subtle body, the mind. Uh, you know, we listen to our mind and, we, you know, we lose self-esteem and, you know, that is, you know, that's the problem with the mind. We have that, we have to conquer the mind, we have to understand, you know, I'm not the body and I'm not the mind either. So we have to cultivate that kind of consciousness. I'm simply spirit soul, servant of Krishna. And according to my past deeds, I've been given this particular body and mind. But they're not eternal. And I'm not going to let them degrade me. I'm not going to let them control me. So you have to really train the mind. We have to, it's a constant battle. The, our preaching begins with our own mind. We have to conquer over our own mind and senses. And we have to bring ourselves to the transcendental platform, that we are servants of Krishna, we're spirit souls. Don't be in any illusion. So we have to have full confidence and faith. So good association is very important. You know, if people are bullying you and talking this, it's bad association. So, you know, just keep away from them, keep a distance from them. They're not the kind of association to have. You just make a point of saying, you know, oh, some people are like that, they have this habit to talk nasty, they're not very nice, they're not gentle, they're very rough in their speaking. So you keep a distance from these people. You don't get too close to them, even if they are devotees. Mentally, you can respect them in the mind, but keep away from them. Keep a, keep a distance, yeah. Thank you, Maharaj. So, Maharaj, there's a, there was a question from yesterday's class. Oh, right, yeah, we had two. Could, could you, would, could, you, would you take it now or do you want to... Yeah, back yes, back take it back? now, yeah, because okay. it's from yesterday. Yeah, sure. So, um, Indu Lekha Kripa Mataji had sent a question to ask, when we cook boga for the deities in the temple, or at home, what kind of aparad may occur? Is it seva aparad? And if yes, then how do we do prayish, prayashita? Yeah, generally it will be seva aparad. Seva aparad, you know, maybe we, we're not, we, we didn't uh, give good attention to cleanliness, and maybe we didn't cook very nicely or something. And so what is the proper atonement for that? Chanting Hare Krishna. The chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra is the best atonement for all kinds of uh, offences. So some kind of aparad, seva aparad in the kitchen, you have to atone for it by good chanting. You pray to Krishna through chanting the holy name. That is how we atone. Okay, thank you, Madhav. Thank you. And the other question? The other question was, as you mentioned yesterday, that the Vrajvasis may have intense love for Krishna, who come under the Kanishta Adhikari level, what is or will be their position in this life and the next? Yes, because they've got pure love for Krishna, you know, they can go to the spiritual world. That's the qualification to go back to Godhead. They have to love Krishna. Oh, no. Okay, thank you very much, Maharaj, for a nice class again. Um, um, does anybody else have anything they'd like to ask before we close? Uh, uh, I have uh, one question from last class, if I'm allowed. Yes. Yeah, go on. Uh, 
Maharaj, as uh, you told that uh, uh, the Guru Parampara is according to the Shiksha, so Shiksha Guru Parampara, but still we see that the order in the Guru Parampara started from Jagannath Swamiji Maharaj and then uh, uh, Gaur Kishore Swamiji Maharaj. It's, it is according to the Diksha order, it's not according to the Shiksha. No, it's not. Jagannath Das Babaji is not the Diksha Guru of Bhaktivinoda. Yeah, yeah, he's not, he's not, yeah, okay. And Bhakti is not the Diksha Guru of Gorkishodas Babaji. Oh, okay, okay, sorry, sorry, I missed it from that, sorry. Right? Got it. Of course, Gorkishodas Babaji is a Diksha Guru of Bhakti Siddhanta, and Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati is also a Diksha Guru of Bhakti Vedanta, but they're also Shiksha Guru. But gen generally, the system of parampara is shiksha, by shiksha. Yes, uh, one more little question, if it is fine. We see another example also, Baladeva Vidyabhusan. Baladeva Vidyabhusan, he is initiated in the Madhva line, but he's t he took shiksha from, uh, vrin from Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. So, yes, one more question was? Go on, um, Sachinandan Prabhu, you had one more question. Yeah, Maharaj, a uh, uh, few class back we uh, discussed about accepting and giving charity. So, uh, I was just like thinking, ESCON, uh, it is externally seen as a very opulent society and uh, the thing, uh, as you were simultaneously discussing in Kali Yuga, the, just that Brahmins are expert in asking for charity and that they have lost their Brahminical qualities, so it's seen as a bad, a bad uh, uh, practice and the people are losing their interest in one asking system because of that. So just like uh, thinking, externally one is also seen as a very opulent society and uh, people uh, tend to make their conceptions or misconceptions that uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of money in this con and it's, it's, it may be misused and they like uh, spread rumors and all. So I just wanted a little bit of clarification on how to deal with such things. Well, ISKCON is very, we're very cautious about how we, I, I tell you, not everywhere in the world is ISKCON opulent. It, no. may, it may be opulent just, just now in India, but it wasn't always opulent. In the 1970s, when I was serving in India, we were not opulent at all. When in the beginning of our movement, our movement had no money at all, no funds. We lived very simply, very poor. And Prabhupada would come to Delhi, there was no vehicle to take him to Vrindavan. He would ask a life member, can you give me, could you arrange a car to take me to Vrindavan? And we didn't even, we had nothing, you know. Hmm. But that was the beginning. And lately some funds have been coming in India, because India has also developed economically. So ISKCON has also taken advantage of that to develop with the economic development in India. ISKCON has also developed. But it's not like that everywhere in the world. You go to Russia, you go to Africa, you go to different places, you'll see how, how it is. Ireland. Hmm? I, I said Ireland. We have those two temples in Ireland. Oh, yeah? They could do with a lot of help. Oh, <laughs> oh really? Yeah. Oh. You mean the temple on the island? Yeah, I mean, it's a beautiful place, but it's very difficult to maintain. I could. Um, I could. And it's a very small community, but they, they manage and they get by on a very frugal budget without very much opulence at all. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's actually the love of the devotees that make it such a special place, not the opulence. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can I just add something to what you just said, Marat? Yeah, please. So I come from a very Indian background, from, and, and in my family we have members of various different um, paramparas, Sri Sampradaya, Pushtimar Sampradaya, etc. And 
it's interesting because about a year ago, just before my, well, two years ago, sorry, just before my initiation, um, we had some family members come over and one of them actually happened to mention, oh, you ISKCON people, you've got lots of money and your gurus fly around in, you know, first class flights and this and that. And I was quite taken aback. But then my mother stepped in, most surprisingly enough, she's from the Pushti Marag line. And she, she actually said to one of my relatives, well, you know, that's not really a very fair comment. And, and, and he said, yes, but it's quite obvious to see. And he said, my mother said, no, what you're seeing is what you want to see. Actually, in the, in, in the Pushti Marag Parampara, we don't treat our gurus very well. She said, look, when their gurus come, they actually pay obeisances. What do we do? Um, and then she turned around and said, actually, it's the love of the devotees, the disciples for the Guru, which are making all this happen. They are contributing with love and they are treating their um, respective personalities with respect and love. So she said, we must be careful not to um, misjudge um, these things. And actually, you're right, it is, you know, largely it's this thing, I, I mean, I come from London, well, I've grown up in London, but I've traveled to a lot of ISKCON temples around the world. And your point is very valid that actually in many places in the world, we're not seen as a very opulent society at all. And what opulence we do have is donated by very generous and loving devotees, you know, who, who donate with a sincere heart. So I think there's a lot to be said for that. Generally, we were known as uh, beggars. Even we yeah. were out, out in the, we were in the streets trying to get people to take our magazines and give yeah. a donation. <laughs> and you know, sometimes we we're criticized. I saw I saw a television program. His Holiness Gopal Krishna Maharaj was on television in Canada, and he had one of these people interview him. And this person was, you know, very antagonistic. He's saying, I've seen you people, you run after people, you try to get them to take a boat and to give money. And Gopal Krishna Maharaj said, he said, yeah, that was in the beginning of our movement. He said, but now we give the books out very freely. He said, often we're giving the books away free. Mm -hmm. But if we talk of India, India, uh, uh, it is, uh, in, I mean, the biggest temple being coming up in Mayapur and, and in Delhi, like we see lots of big temples. And, uh, in every state we see, we see very big temple construction either going on or big, big opulent temple and big worship. Yeah, India. <laughs> India is special. There's been a boom, a great boom in India. Yeah, it has been. So, but like sometimes it, it draws envy from other people sometimes and it is like, uh, uh, it's, it's gone sometimes being criticized as like, uh, it, taking Indian money or outside and all those things, we tend to hear while preaching these things, it comes. And, uh, the misconceptions, a lot of this is misconceptions that people have and people, you know, it's human nature, isn't it, to criticize and be very, very envious about stuff. <laughs> yeah, but like uh, the, uh, the thing which I wanted to ask, how should it uh, show itself? And, uh, because such things will obviously draw the envy from other people. It's something like, uh, you know, Bhakti Siddhartha, Bhakti Siddhartha Maharaj used to travel inside a car. This is the first time a sannyasi traveled in the car. And he used it in Krishna's service. But apparently, it may, it may also draw envy from other sadhus that he is having a car, something like that. Uh, similarly, if one is using the opponent in God's service by attracting lots of uh, innocent people uh, to Krishna consciousness, it is, it is an attraction. Um, big temples are, they do attract, or uh, big feasts are, and they do attract initially. Everyone, it did attract me also. But it sometimes may draw envy also. So, I mean, is it like if these things go on like that, or is there something needed to be done in that respect? There will always be envy. That's the nature of the material world. People are envious. What can we. Okay. We can see Krishna is Bhagavan. Krishna is not a poor man. But the devotees don't, are not rich. You can't say the devotees, are, they don't have their own bank accounts, they don't have money. Devotees are living simply. Whatever opulence is there, it's shared. Everyone's invited to come to the temple and take part in the program. You don't need to be envious, you can join in, come and take part. When we eat, 
You know, when we eat, people can come and eat with us. That was one of the one things that actually drew me, that kept me attractive to the manor, is that you could turn up for breakfast, and you can still do that now. You can turn up for breakfast, lunch, dinner, any day of the week, and it doesn't matter where you come from, whether you're devotee or not, they will welcome you with open arms, and you know, you're know you welcome to, to join in the prasadam. And it, you know, it, it's quite an endearing thing, isn't it? And what Prabhupada has given us is something absolutely amazing. And it's, I think it's about the mood that we carry that through and the transparency that we carry that through with going forwards. You know, the, the future generations, they need to be able to stand up um, and be accountable for what happens going forward and actually be transparent in their financial dealings. And we won't, you know, then people can criticize all they want. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, I think we have to finish here now. Thank you very much. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you very much. Nice class. Srila Prabhupada. Please. Thank you, Thank you, Maharaj. Krishna. Hari Guru Maharaj, how did that go? That was good. I really enjoyed that class. Really? Yeah, it was a really good class. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, I'm getting messages as well. They're, they're liking this very much. So, um, thank you very much. Well, his question, the questions are, are pretty good, you know. Questions yeah, are pretty... It's good that they ask questions. And I think it's really nice that you're giving them that time through the class to... Um, answer questions. Many other teachers, they they don't. I mean, I know it sounds critical, but they sometimes they kind of have this sh very very short window for questions, you know. Um, so I think this is nice because they're also getting a lot of your personal realization and experience. Um, and I think it's a, it's been a great benefit, really. You do. I've enjoyed this very much. It's been absolutely absolutely wonderful to hear this. You know, almost all the way through for a change. Okay, that's good to hear. Anyway, I think, I, I, I hope we can finish tomorrow. Well, today's only thurs, Thursday, right? Thursday. You've got tomorrow and Saturday. Oh, yes. good. We've got two days. Okay, good. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So it's nice. So I think okay. we're pretty much right, on you, schedule. I was going to say, sorry, go on. We're pretty much on schedule. Yes, yes. 
Um, I was going to ask, do you want somebody to help you get those fonts right for the next couple of Yeah, that would be good. If somebody knows how, I don't know how to do these things, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm completely... Okay, I, I think I know how to do it. Um, I'm going to pop by to MI today um, in about the next, are you going to be around in the next hour? Yeah. Yeah, I'll be here. Okay, why don't I come around in an hour and see if I can do it? Okay, great. That'd be nice. If that's yeah. okay. Yeah, thank you so much. All right, let's see, let's see if we can do that. And then, that's okay. All right, I'll see you shortly. Okay, Haribo. Thank you so much.